Hi everyone, my name is Matthew. I go by Ting Thing on the internet. I am the developer of Platform Builder. Welcome to this tutorial. In this video, I'll give you a quick flyby overview of Platform Builder so that you know how it's structured and how to get around. This will cover the first three pages of the manual, so let's get started. All right, so we are starting Platform Builder. Right here is the main menu. Click on Start to build, play, and export your Platform Builder games. Visit the Explore section to play other games that people have posted on the Platform Builder community. Sandbox is for building and playing single levels. And then you have some options for things like screen size, volume, and so on. Platform Builder also offers key mapping, so if you want to do that, hover over the key you want to change and press your desired key on the keyboard. You can switch between Players 1 and Player 2 by clicking here. And if we had a controller to plug in, you would see those options too. There's credits if you're into that. Uh, <laughs> hey, look, there's me. All right, well, anyway, let's go back. And I want to show you around a little bit. So to do this, we will visit the example file. The example file is a simple pre-built game that I made myself included with your copy of Platform Builder. You just left click and select edit. Now what you're looking at is the overworld editor. Although Platform Builder is primarily for side-scrolling run and jump games, the overworlds are designed to be a top-down perspective. You don't have to do it that way, but you can. The overworld editor is one of four primary sections that divide up Platform Builder. You also have the course editor, which is for your actual levels. There is the game screen editor, which is for things like the splash screen, title screen, game over screen. And then there is game setup, which is your general settings and also where you can build your own custom enemies, items, characters, etc. To get around, click on menu or press U on your keyboard for the hotkey shortcut. I want to enter a course, so I'll first go to the level manager. This is where you create and organize your levels before you begin working inside one of them. The example file already has a bunch of levels made, so I'll open up this folder here by double clicking and select course 1A. I could double click here, but an alternative would be to have it selected and then click edit. To move the view around, you can use the WASD keys on your keyboard. You can also use 4682 buttons on your numpad if you have one, as long as the numlock is enabled. Or what I like to do is to click and drag the view around with the middle mouse button. If I want to view my title screen, that would be in the game screen editor. So let's go back to the menu, select edit game screens and choose title screen. Now we are looking at the title screen of our game. This has a similar look to the course editor, but instead of creating something to play, you create something to look at, like a scene. And of course there is text, there's buttons to start your game, stuff like that. Different game screens will look a little different depending what it is, but that's the basic idea. And then the final section of Platform Builder is game setup, so let's go there now. Platform Builder has quite a few of its own built-in things like enemies and items, but here at Game Setup is where you can create your own. This is a powerful tool which gives you a lot of controls for making stuff exactly how you want them to be. With Platform Builder Pro, you can even upload your own sounds and images to help your game stand out from everyone else. So that's it. That's how you make your way around Platform Builder. But before we close, let me show you what it is like to start a game from scratch. So let's go back to the main menu, click on Start, and I'll create a new game at the top here. Give it a name. Click OK. We'll talk about simple and advanced mode later. For now, I'll just stick with simple mode, so I'll click maybe later. And since this is a new game, we have a blank overworld. And if I try to visit a level, we have a blank level manager. So in order to visit the course editor to edit a level, I have to make a level first, click on new, give it a name, and there we go. I can actually make several. Click and drag to rearrange them. If I want to put them in a folder, I'll click on New again. Only this time, check Use as Folder. So there's my folder. Let's actually rename that so it doesn't look like an actual level. And so now I have a folder. If I wanted to move some of my areas into the folder, I can click and drag it down here. If I pull up just a little bit, you'll see that arrow there showing that this area is ready to go into the folder I just release. 
and now it's inside the folder. I can grab this one and move it right up there or pull down a little bit and it'll show up below the folder. Now to get into my folder, I can double click on it or I can just have it selected and click open. And so there's my area too. I can create new areas in this folder and populate it with a few more levels. And I can take an area that I have inside the folder, pull it up here to this button, and that will bring it out of the folder. Similarly, if I just click this button, I'll move out of the folder myself. And then to visit an area, I'll select it just like I did in the example file, click edit. And so here we are now in an empty area. If I wanted to go back to my overworld, that's what the overworld manager is for. We already have one overworld that you just start with, but we could make more worlds if we wanted to. We will see these managers show up again inside game setup with custom items, enemies, projectiles, everything. All of your stuff is organized in the managers and all of your managers is how you get to your stuff. So there's a quick overview of getting around inside Platform Builder. For the next lesson, we will talk about all the buttons down here in your workstation and start building your games. See you then.